And here we have our finished render. The power of time remapping. Now let's move on to surfacing. And to lay down the textures and materials, we want to hide a few items to speed up our workflow. This will speed up our texture editing process as well as the interactive viewer. So we want to turn off the indirect lights, the light fixtures, and the living room. Expand the workplace and let's select everything down to the drapes. Press H. Now leave the glass strips alone. That will leave the frames and the glass visible. Click on scale, down to workbooks, hide. And then we're going to leave the work counter, which is basically the closet and the counter. Hide the desk lamp, hide the chair, hide the side window, hide the pebbles and the bamboo. Once you're done, collapse the workplace folder. Now basically this gives me the essential parts that I'm going to start surfacing. So what we want to do is select the ground item switch to shader tree and since filter on selection is selected you'll see that the floor material and the bamboo tank material are both visible so let's grab the floor material named floor and we want to drag this just above the clay material oops I think I might have there we go. Once we do that, it will become visible and leaving the clay material to affect everything else. We're going to start with an image map. So expand the floor material. Click on the material itself. And let's add an image map. And right now we have no image maps in our gallery. So we're going to say load. We're going to navigate to the content folder of Modo. So this would be on a Macintosh um, library, application support, Luxology, Modo 301, and content. And we're going to go to presets and null, oh, sorry, images, pH textures, wood. And we're going to select wood, 0 to bump. And this will be our wooden plank floor. Now the image is going to get loaded. We're going to turn off anti-aliasing. I usually turn off anti-aliasing for all my images, um, excluding HDR images used for lighting or some of the displacement maps that we use. Um, by turning this off, the image becomes very crisp. And we're going to switch to Texture Locator. And we're going to make sure that the UV map chosen is the floor UV map. Now, if you don't know what the UV map this object has, you can switch to List. And right here, you'll see the floor UV map. Switching back. You'll notice that the size of the image floor is illogical. It's kind of too big. So to remedy this, we'll change the horizontal and vertical wrap of the locator since it's using the UV map. This, just, this number just means our tileable image will be tiled so many times. So we'll need to plug a number that suits the scale of the scene. It's not a numerical value, so it's not 10 centimeters or 5 meters, but an estimated value like 4 or 8. So for this, we're going to start off with 5 on both. Now let's switch from shaded view to textured view. That looks pretty good, but it's still too large for this scene, so we're going to bump it up to 10. Now it's getting there. Let's just bump it up to 11. I think that looks just right. So we're going to change the layer effect to bump. And if the direction of the UV or the direction of the texture on the object is not correct. You can go to UV map and rotate your uh, model or UV polygons. So if I go to the list, so you can either grab the entire model, rotate it 9 degrees, or just rotate the actual image in Photoshop or some kind of Im image editing software. 
Okay. So we're going to instance this layer. So create double click, uh, right click, and create instance, and set this to the diffuse amount. Now you'll see that the one that's italicized is the instance, and the, the original one has got normal font. We want to change the properties of this diffuse amount to multiply and the opacity to 80%. What this is, is it uses the darker values from the image to take away diffuse amount. So true blacks will be only 80% black since we adjusted the opacity. And the diffuse amount channels controls the amount of light bounced back from the surface. This image map for the panels has the black outlines of the plank borders, which are usually crevices or spaces between the wood, and are dark. But we don't want it to be totally black. This time, right-click and duplicate the wood um, original image. But do not instance this. This time, we're going to load a new image, but it'll retain the same settings that the bump had. So load image and we're going to navigate to wood02 dark. Okay. We're going to change from bump to diffuse color on the layer effect. So by again by duplicating the bump layer we were able to keep the same properties but we replaced the image. That's why we didn't use the instance. We're not going to leave this uh, word color to a default brown. We need to add a gradient that will give us a bit more life. So add layer, gradient, and make sure you reset all the positions and size. Let's go to the texture layer properties. And we're going to change. Oh, OK, so it's diffuse color. And that's what we want it to be. We're going to left click on edit gradient under gradient properties. And the input parameter right now, by default, is the bump height. And we're going to leave it at that. We're going to set the first color to a nice deep green. And this will, this will give us an initial way to see what we're going to be doing. And then middle click at the end of the curve at 100%. Make sure it's at an input of 100%. And we're going to change this color to a nice bright red. So as you can see, the lighter areas of my bump are red and the crevices are dark green. They're not going to be visibly dark green here because the diffuse amount has made them uh, into a much darker color. <coughs> so green being on the zero value, the black, and the red being on the white value, the white. To make this more prominent, we're going to push the green keys close to the red value and have the green bleed from the, the panel borders into the edges. So let's set this one to about 90%. And you can start seeing the green showing up in the small crevices of the bump. And now we're going to change the red into a lighter, lighter, more um, green tint. And this counteracts on the reddish brown, so it's a complementary color for the brown that we originally had. And it'll be get, and it'll get a more worn and richer color to it. So first of all, let's change the, over, the blend mode to overlay, okay, and the opacity down to 70%. Okay. So right now, that looks okay. Let's break up some of the wooden surface continuity and just and for that we're going to instance the bump layer once more. And set the layer effect to roughness. 
this will make it rougher on the areas that basically get uh, worn out during time, with time, which is the surface, and it'll leave the crevices with less of a uh, rough amount for that. Moving on to the material, let's add some reflections in there. So add a reflection amount of 5% and the frontal to 50. And we're going to instance the bump map just once more. Oops, we should have done this one to be the roughness and this one kept it as the bump. Okay, so instance the bump once more. And we're going to set this to reflection amount. Okay, and what we want to do is set the blending mode to multiply, basically making all the black grooves non reflective. Okay? This will not affect this will not affect the five percent reflection amount since I'm telling it to darken the reflections and not to add or screen on it. So if we leave it as this, um, we would have a very polished floor, but we're looking for a rough and matte floor. So we're going to switch on blurry reflections and take the roughness down to 30. You'll notice nothing changed when I change the roughness because I already have a layer above it modulating that effect. So go to the roughness layer and set the blending mode to multiply as well. And this will also make the floor uh, less rough in the grooves according to the black and white image of the bump. So everything looks fine in eye view, but now would be a good time to do a test render. And we can check for noise and such on the floor. So let's go to render. And you'll see it'll render pretty fast. So, so right now, the blurry reflections a bit need more samples to clear out. You can see a little bit of noise. So. Let's go to material again and set the reflection rays to something like 120. Also, the floor looks a little bit too clean, especially for a matte floor. And to remedy this, we're going to use a noise layer. And this noise layer is going to break up the surface a tad. So in the shader tree, add noise layer. Set this to, well, let's go to driver A, first of all, to get to C this noise layer. Let's change our effect shading to driver A and you'll notice that our noise layer now is very uh, evident there. The reason I use this uh, because driver A gives me a good representation of the noise and it's, it's pretty speedy to use and it's a simple black and white. If I had used a bump, for instance, let's change this to bump and change the driver to bump, it'll be a, a red, uh, green and blue value and that's not something that's going to be very uh, understandable to me at this point. So we're going to keep it at driver A. Okay. It's an extra strip, but it's worth it for me to see it uh, more clearly. So let's go to the locator, zero out everything I have. And for the size, we're going to scale down to about 0.2 meters or 200 millimeters. Okay. We're also going to decrease the frequency. So you can see right now there's a lot of um, basically buildup of noise. I want to make it a bit smoother. So press 2, and that will smooth things up. It will be softer and less noisy modulation. We also want to add a separate shader to the group. So add layer shader. Okay. And we're going to drag this above the base shader. Now what we want to do is basically take this down to 0.2 and change the noise layer from bump from driver A, sorry, to bump and change this to shading. It'll be a good time to do.
a render. And as you can see now, the floor is broken up. There's a little bit of noise showing up in the planks, which is exactly what I needed. So we're done with the floor. So remember to save as, and we're going to say shot wooden floor dot LXL, save, and we're done for here.